All right, folks, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, hold on a second. God, every time I log on to this thing, there's more stuff going on. How's everybody doing, man? Uh, it is good to be back. Uh, go away for a week and you guys destroy the market. And at the beginning of last week, I told the Max Afterburner folks before I hopped in the jet and uh, took off uh, – the S and P would hit 4,000. Um, I got that wrong, completely wrong. It hit like 3,900, 3,900. So got the level wrong, but got the direction absolutely right. I told you we were absolutely uh, going to implode. Uh, and did. yeah, Mitch, Sao Paulo, man, welcome. I saw that you're getting the American Airlines uh, treatment. Uh, flying. So I got to tell you, man, the uh, I'm blessed. That uh, I obviously blessed, but being able to just hop in my own fighter jet and blast off and and head and not have to deal with uh, flights at all is is pretty cool. Uh, high level debrief, man. I, I just <clears throat> it was awesome. Uh, as you guys know, I've been kind of sprinting pretty hard for the past year uh, after doing the medicine and uh, really getting a new direction in my life, a new lease on life. Uh, and then after that, the first look, our kind of top secret first look for our angels and, and supporters, I was like, you know what? I'm taking a break, man. I'm going to go get my mind right. Ended up really not being a break because it ended up being kind of work. But if that's work, you know, sign me up for the rest of my life. But uh, flew over to Houston and uh, flew Paul Barnhart, uh, the third, uh, just a great American the day after his birthday, after he and his wife saw Maverick with their son. That's what he told me. He's like, oh, all I want to see is Maverick on my birthday. That's it, man. I'm like, oh, okay, interesting. That was like last week. He didn't know I was flying out. So his wife uh, brought him to the airport that next morning, and he was completely blown away. So he's invested some money in his exact words where I will help you guys uh, get this movie done or I'll die trying. I mean, he was just – It's it's so cool when a guy – says this was my lifelong dream and it exceeded expectations that's when i just that's that's cool that makes my heart smile guys like exceeded my expectations uh and then obviously went up to valhalla <clears throat> marcus uh, marcus and melanie's ranch you get you get to their gate and it's a mile and a half on this dirt road with trees it's just beautiful there's a big log cabin on the right with a lake that's where his mom lives and you keep going <clears throat> then there's a y in the road and to the right all the way up on the highest point in the county is their place and then to the left is their it's a barn doesn't do it justice it's a massive barn downstairs are is the gym and podcast studio and uh the, their business and upstairs the whole length of the thing is like they weren't kidding because I didn't want to impose. They're like, come crash with us. I'm like, no, nah, no, I'll sit in a hotel. And Mark is like, come to our house, man. We don't even know you're going to be there. We don't even know people are here sometimes. So the whole top floor is like a, uh, uh, is, is a, it's a huge living spaces, bedrooms. It, it's just now I, it's insane that their whole property, he's just a great dude. So he, uh, Melanie and I, uh, did the podcast, um, on Friday, but Thursday, Jake, you know, I wanted to take a day off on Thursday. Uh, Jack, our middle son that many of you met, uh, he, he's thinking about Texas A&M, CU, Texas A&M. So I drove up to College Station because I'm, I'm this type of guy. I wanted to go to the George Bush Library and walk around. I love that type of stuff. Presidential libraries, the Churchill bunker in England. I'm that, I love doing that. And JT called me. He's like, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, up here in College Station. He's like, come on over to San Antonio. We're shooting a Black Rifle coffee commercial in one of your buddy's hangars out at this field outside of San Antonio. Uh, a guy that flew Tomcats in my sister squadron. I'm like, all right. So I drove from College Station all the way back to Houston, jumped in the jet, went to San Antonio, and then took uh, one of their Black Rifle guys flying, Eli. Saw Matt again, saw Evan, saw, saw all the Black Rifle guys. Didn't bring anything up. <laughs> How's the SEC investigation or, uh, you know, what's going on? None of that. Uh, none of that came up, obviously, because they're, they're they're good guys. I mean, obviously. But uh, and then back from San Antonio, did the podcast uh, Friday morning. Uh, and guess who was after me? Doc Martin. So Doc Martin lives in Austin. So he drove down Friday 
and was scheduled to go after me. And after I got done, I gave him a hug and I was going to head to the airport so I could fly back. And Marcus is like, hey, man, can you stay for Martine's part? I'm like, sure. So I kind of sat in the background and but it was it was kind of a, a, a bigger podcast about the medicine. And this was the. Because I asked the producer before Marcus showed up, I'm like, is he out of the closet with the medicine? They're like, well, on one podcast ages ago, he kind of mentioned a little bit in passing, but not really. So this podcast with Marcus and I is officially I hate using that term out of the class. He's now on the radar. He's on the medicine radar. Uh, and then obviously with Martine after me, it, it was super radar. And Melanie has done five MEO DMT. So she's up on the radar too. So it was really cool being, uh, you know, be, being, being with my brother that I did the medicine with. So it was just awesome. And then flew uh, from Houston to Baton Rouge because there was a wrath of God line of thunderstorms in the way. Uh, and I was pissed until I landed in Baton Rouge and then getting out of the jet, this massive like G5 jet parts next to me. And this guy runs off, big looking dude, blonde hair, spiky hair come front up to me. He's like, holy shit, man. You know, it, it turns out it's Pat, Pat McAfee, McAfee. Uh, you know, played in the Super Bowl as a rookie. Now he's like a WWE announcer. He's like, can I get a selfie with you? I'm like, sure. I have no idea who the guy is. I do now. <laughs> he wants me to be on his podcast. He has a foundation that supports military children. He gives scholarships to, uh, you know, the sons and daughters of military members. And uh, so short story long, dumping in the Baton Rouge turned out to be just incredibly uh, awesome. So uh just good shit. And then woke up Sunday, Saturday, Saturday and two legged home from Baton Rouge uh, home before the South Florida thunderstorms kicked in. So I appreciate uh, everything that you guys let me do last week. Uh, obviously, Bart went on Friday, but, uh, you know, before I left, I told you guys, I said SPX 4000. And like I just said, I got it wrong. <laughs> it went, there's where I left on Monday. I'm like, it's going, we're, we're going back down to 4,000 guys at a minimum. Bang. Um, but let's roll inverted real quick because this is, this isn't hard guys, right? People still looking for a bottom and shit like that. I mean, this is just, do I need to do it? Of course I do. Let's, let's just do this. This is just, this is a no brainer. <laughs> Anybody see a trend? Um, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. I, I get people are getting hurt. Well, people who aren't in Top Gun Options. We knew we, 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 this was another career call. Uh, I love, I love getting shit right. I, I like getting shit right, but not to this extent, right? Because people are getting destroyed. Bitcoin, the, the crypto. My, a year ago, waiters and waitresses on my Facebook timeline asking me about uh, Dogecoin or something like that. I'm like, oh, for the love of God, folks. And then, just people getting destroyed. <sighs> you guys know me. Half my Gordon Gecko says, good. Life's tough. It's even tougher if you're stupid. For every buyer, there's a seller. For every person getting destroyed, somebody's making money. <clears throat> but to compliment us, it's usually the smarter people at times like this that are making money and the dumber people, the less situational awareness folks. I'm not going to use the word dumber. That's not that's not a nice characterization. But old me, if you're making up some sort of fictional thing with a dog on it and you think it's I, I just will stop. So anyway, um, <clears throat> this is uh, this is bad and uh, it's going to get worse. So, yeah, I know, Brent. So I landed or no, I, I texted my my boys, Jack and Matthew. I'm like, who's this guy? And they're like, oh, my God, he was on Barstool Sports and this got thrown out. He was in the Super Bowl. Now he's a WWE guy. So, again, you know, I think he and I really hit it off well because I'm like, I have no idea who the guy is. So <laughs> we had a nice conversation shooting the shit. And he's like, oh, man, we got to talk. Gave me his number and his email address. And then when I got to the hotel room, I looked up who he was. But all right, let's get into it, man. Um, last week. Uh, was not a good week. The past, this is, you know, as Maverick came out, which kind of did a semi-decent job of showing you everything bad that can happen in naval aviation, in any aviation, but specifically in military aviation. Um, although, 
you know, in, in the one flight in Maverick, everything that could have gone wrong in somebody's career went wrong in one flight, right? Like the dude that blacks out and, you know, Maverick locks him up and gets tone and wakes him up, which physically, first of all, we have software in the jet that will save the jet. Uh, if you ain't responding and you're going into the ground, it'll roll wings level and climb up. Uh, I have three buddies who don't know they're dead right now who flew into the ground. Uh, not Well, flew into Earth, well, two of them behind a ship. Um, but that software exists now. But And then the lady and the other dude taking a bird strike and both engines failing. I mean, so anyway, but really bad week. We lost a V-22 out in El Centro with five guys on it. Uh, one of the guys was a graduate of Norwich University, uh, one of the pilots. Um, so it was bad. A Seahawk crashed, um, a Hornet crashed, and the guy died uh, in right around Star Wars Canyon, um, you know, doing a low level up here. Um, it's sad to say, I hope that it was mechanical. I hope this, because if, it, if the dude crashed into the ground, you know, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Aviation is a self-cleaning oven. So very, very tough week for military uh, aviation. And a lot of guys uh, who might be needing to do the medicine uh, soon. Um, very sad. So remember, man, freedom is not free. And uh, it's dangerous. Uh, I told you, I didn't. <clears throat> I knew of a couple folks that died in combat in, in aviation. But me, out of my 16, 17 folks that died from students to the fleet, not one of them were combat related. It was all this. Uh, so anyway, all right, let's get into it. <clears throat> I feel good being back, man. Here we go. Shanghai returns to lockdown for mass testing just days after reopening. So last week before I left, it was what? China opening back up. I'm like, eh, mm, eh. and then they closed. So, you know, one of these days in here, one of these, look at that, one, two, three, three massive pops. Um, it, it, I, I, I knew it. I'm like, yeah, China opening up. Market is rallying. I'm like, didn't believe it. And we got it right because I'm like, that's that, no, they're not. So, uh, you know, locking down a city of 25 million people is insane. Uh, so supply chain issues uh gonna get better i can't believe and, and i did my best not to watch anything last week i was right in my journal meditating <clears throat> meeting just great americans i flew across you know over to texas i brought a ton of no fallen heroes patches and shirts just giving them out to people shaking hands kissing babies but the random time i would be seeing news or i'm doing the lo lonely guy sitting at the restaurant by myself at the bar looking at my phone i'm like oh my god seeing joe biden the man is just, he's an idiot at this point. Now I just dislike the man. <clears throat> he's got enough cognitive skill, maybe, to realize what he's doing, and he's lying. The 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 Biden, or I'm sorry, the Putin, you know, inflation and price, it's just, it's, it's awful. He's got the, like, lowest approval ratings in, in the history of the presidency, uh, and it's going to get worse. Um, but you know things are horrific when this is the Drudge Report this morning. You ready? Fed nightmare, inflation or a recession? What's with say? Both. Maybe a 75 point raise this week. Whoops. Crypto firms halt withdrawals. We'll talk about that. Bitcoin plunge. Stocks back to bear market. Did anybody in this room think that before? Obviously before last week that this chop. Let me roll verted because <laughs> being inverted is we'll give you vertigo. Did anybody think that this thing, that this bounce was just going to keep going? I'm going to tell you this again. The, the days of a V are over. You will not probably again in your lifetime see like implosion and bounce. The last time we had something like that, the Fed jumped in here and saved us. It was the COVID crash. Wrote a book about it. We nailed it to the day. And imploded, we nailed it to the day that it exploded when Jerome Powell dropped that nuke. It's saved on my desktop. Jeffrey Gunlock, all the other guys. No, we're going to come back down to these March lows. I'm like, are you high? Did you not listen to Jerome Powell? And I'll do whatever it takes to save the stock market, essentially is what he said. 
So they got it all wrong and we got it right. But this is this is a no brainer, folks. There is not a bottom in sight. Let's go to uh, let's go look to the dark. Let's go to the dark side, man. Let's go to SPX. For the past month and a half, if you listen to me, what did I say? There's a I drew a delta in here, didn't I? I said there is a lot of altitude and this is going to get filled. If you've been trading off of the intel I've been giving you, you are printing money. We are going down to here with a distinct possibility to go down to here. The next, quote, level of support, if you're a technologist or whatever they're called, chartist, is down at 30, just call it 3,400. We'll, we'll round up. So, and if, if there ain't no stop here, let's look out below down to here. That's just, this is... This, this isn't hard. <clears throat> what can save us now? The Fed stopping? Um, no. The Fed cannot stop raising interest rates. I'm preaching to the choir. They screwed this up. They're awful. Janet Yellen's awful. She's an idiot. And I, I, I mean that. Right? Uh, and then Jim Cramer last week, there's not going to be a recession. All these people who are allegedly the smartest people in the room are idiots. Real quick, we got to get into this. Ukraine def fears defeat in East without surge in military aid. Um, <clears throat> so we have to bring this up because it's getting worse, as I've told you. 100-day mark, what was it, last week? I'm like, only going to get worse. <clears throat> you ready for this? Ukraine fears, fears defeat in the East without what? Surge of military aid. Um, what have we been doing? $40 billion from the United States is not a surge in military aid. Giving them longer range rockets. We're, we, ladies and gentlemen, are running out of ammo. The United States military is depleting their stores to send it to Ukraine. We are running out of uh, ammo, folks. So, uh, and again, I the more I talk to people about this, the, the kind of, uh, I'm getting a sense that people are starting to wake up. Even, you know, it's Pride Month, so all the Ukrainian flags disappeared from people's bi bio picture. Now it's the Pride flag, and then it'll be back to Ukraine, right? Whatever the current thing is, gun control this or Ukraine flag that or um, I'm telling you, we need to stop. Give um, Henry Kissinger agrees with me. Give Putin that sliver of shit he's already captured and call it a day. I don't think it's going to turn out to be the Berlin Wall and holy shit, you can't go. Let's just kind of get some peace here. Stop killing each other these people online who have like so much hate for the russian you can hate putin great there's 18 19 year old 20 year old conscripts in the russian army I have no idea what they're doing here's a 1911 rifle and go in that direction that are just getting turned into hair teeth and eyeballs they have mobile crematoriums folks they're hiding how many soldiers are dying could you imagine being a parent of a russian soldier they deserve to die that how you feel? What Putin did was wrong. <clears throat> and I get a lot of them are defecting and this. Great. But stop killing. What is this? The Middle Ages? We're fighting over land. So if we don't stop and give him that sliver that he's already taken, what's the, again, I, if I was in the Pentagon or with Joe Biden, I'm like, what's the desire right at the top of our pyramid, Mr. President? What is the di desired end state? Kick Putin out of Ukraine. Kill everything type of. Do you know what that's going to take to push them completely out of Ukraine at this point? More death, more destruction, more weapons. And it's not going to happen. You guys know, and this is a dead horse for me, but I will repeat. If that happens, he will use nuclear weapons. I guarantee it. The dude's dying of cancer, allegedly, anyway. So I'm sick of people doing me, well, if you, you know, if you say this, you're a Putin plant. I'm a life plant, man. I'm a soul plant. 
whether it's a Ukrainian 18 year old or a Russian 18 year old, they are soul, they are God. So anyway, it's, it's, it's awful. I'm sad, but we're not going to change. You got our secretary of defense who ran a hedge fund with massive investments in Lockheed, Northrop Grumman. War is good business, folks. General Eisenhower warned us, be careful of the, you guys got to keep an eye out for the defense military industrial complex. All those, the sleeping giant after Pearl Harbor that got punched in the face, we stood up factories and airplanes and Jeeps and tanks. At the end of the war, those companies weren't going to be like, okay, let's just stop. We had to make new boogeymen. Korea, Vietnam, Saddam, Afghanistan. So folks, this is a this continues to be a potential red swan out in uh, it's out there. OK. Werner, why don't you answer that question? Since we've said it eight fucking million times. First of all, Ukraine, not a NATO country. It's actually a pretty corrupt country and it's not a democracy, but that's a separate conversation. Joe Biden, to his credit, has said what repeatedly, along with uh, Boris and uh, Macron and everybody else. You invade, you even accidentally drop a shell in a NATO country, it will be World War III. That's the answer, Werner. Have you not been listening? You invade a NATO country or even go come close to one, it invokes Article 5 and we're all going to gang up on you. Do you think Putin? We'll do that. Are you one of the people that believes, well, if we let some of Ukraine fall, he's going to storm, steamroll into Poland? That is World War III. We all agree with that. It's not World War III with Ukraine. We're just doing the coward move of you guys fight. Here's all the weapons so your children can die. I know the answer to that. <laughs> so... Um, no, Werner, my soul is not in fighting mode. My soul is in peace mode. But unfortunately, if he made a move against a NATO country, it's war. The world could not be more clear on this. Putin knows this. All his defense people know this. That's why they haven't done it. If you're Putin and you are, you do have plans on doing that, why wouldn't you move into Estonia right now? Because you know what we're going to do. First of all, you're getting kicked in the balls in Ukraine and you're not winning. Anybody who thinks that Putin's going to move on a NATO country is a fool and just doesn't understand what's currently going on in the world. But my soul is in peace mode. My soul is not in fighting mode, period. I do not. But anyway, all right. operationally, China closing down again. War in Europe hasn't changed. It's getting worse. Again, me and maybe the Pope and Henry Kissinger are talking peace. I ain't no fucking Neville Chamberlain, man. If you invade a NATO country, I'll man up a jet, period. I'll fight because it's our agreement. I would love to have peace, but <clears throat> you, can be a, 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 you can be a spiritual warrior, man. I was talking to Marcus about this. He's like, man, this country, they, people don't know that there are sleeping, there's a lot of sleeping giants in this country. And if we get pushed past a certain point, you don't want to see how violent I can become or other people can become. I love that meme that it's got a picture of Rambo. It's kind of you know, hitchhiking before he gets arrested by the cop. It's like, wait until the people who want to be left alone get involved. Okay? Because it won't be pretty. So, <clears throat> yeah, exactly, David. Well, that's what they said. Hey, our, our, our objective is to weaken Putin. Even just saying that, we folks, a month and a half ago, Joe Biden, we need, he can't stay in power. It's regime change. Vladimir Putin. See, Russian people, they are coming after me and you. We have to do this. We've played into this guy's hand the entire time. And then the Secretary of Defense. Our objective is to diminish Russian militarily. Okay. And then Russian media, the Secretary of Defense, their Secretary of State, and Putin have all said, if that seriously happens, I will nuke Ukraine. Oh, no, he won't. The people who are saying, oh, no, he won't about Vladimir Putin's moves are fools. I do not want to be, you know, 
right on this. I thought I turned everybody's cameras off. This I can't stand this, guys, but I'm not going to complain to you. Uh, general, I can turn everybody's cameras off. There. Sorry. When I log in, I usually go through all of this stuff, so my bad. Okay, uh, here we go. Fed nightmare, inflation or recession, going to be both. Crypto, we're, we're going lower, folks. We're back well into a bear market. The NASDAQ's getting destroyed. Big tech names. After Amazon split, I'm like, Amazon will see 100. It ain't going higher at all. Amazon is going to break 100 easily. Now, starting to, the hair on the back of my neck starting to stand up because I need a haircut. But more importantly, Amazon breaks 100. I might start accumulating. I might. We'll see. I got, but it all depends on velocity, right? The margin calls that are coming, crypto is turning into a black swan event. Coin, no matter what people say, I read the shit and I listened to the guy's interview, or the, I'm sorry, the lady's interview on CNBC. We might see, if we go bankrupt, we're going to seize people's accounts. What? Yeah, that says it clearly on page 922 of the agreement you signed. So the fact that, um, you know, uh, what's it? Uh, what's the name of the company? Uh, Celsius, right? Celsius pauses all withdrawals. Could you imagine having your money with this company and you go to hit withdrawal today and they're like, you can't. It's your money. Technically, it isn't because it's ours. A lot of people are getting a lot of lessons recently in reading what they sign. Due to extreme market conditions, meaning we're broke, today we're announcing we're pausing swaps, transfers, withdrawals. Holy shit. Let's go on. We have activated a clause in our terms of use that will allow for this process to take place. Do you think the booger eating kid in the basement knew this? My equity portfolio is getting destroyed. Let me close some of my crypto to cover this margin call. Holy shit, I can't do that. Now I got a margin. Guys. Wow. Unbelievable. There is shady shit going on in the world of crypto. There are Ponzi schemes on top of Ponzi schemes on top of Ponzi schemes. And you don't need to know anything about crypto. All you need to understand is you have several entities willing to pay people yield on their crypto assets that they deposit. Then you have to understand crypto doesn't inherently generate a yield. Duh. There are some very big, huge, massive air pockets in the world of crypto. This is a good, this is a good interview. So. Um, I, I, again, uh, this is, th th this is a potential black swan event, folks. If crypto, if Bitcoin keeps falling guys, um, I mean, is we're at an 18 month low. I get it. We can do this guys. The, it's a buying moment. It's the crypto goes through these cycles. Blah, 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 blah. You can give it all to me like that. And I'm still going to completely disagree. Um, well, let's not even talk about it. We're in solo Amazon. I, I'm not going to dance on crypto's grave. Uh, if you like it, buy it. If you don't. So the CPI last week was insane. The fact that the White House the day before came out and had the, the it's just we've never. And you all know, because we're smart, that we, not we, the government changed years ago how they calculate inflation if inflation was calculated it uh, the way we did in jimmy carter we'd be up 20 30 percent inflation okay so this is what's interesting is people are getting more hammered than what they're seeing in 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 real life they're getting more hammered in more in real life than what the gut numbers are saying that's what i was trying to say meaning eight percent inflation sounds horrific nine percent it's quadruple that, at least triple that. So, what the hell is that? So anyway, I, I can't. And then mumbles make shitty pants getting on uh, TV and just again blaming everything, everybody but him. 
And when you look at the chart of gas prices and inflation and everything like that, they can do whatever they want. But when he took office, it's gone straight up. And then you put like the war in Ukraine all the way to the right side of the chart for the past month. It's gone up a little bit, obviously. So it's a lie. You guys know it's all a lie. Janet Yellen, the other day, Janet Yellen said what? I don't think we're going to have a recession. So when Jim Cramer and Janet Yellen both do, hey, we're not going to have an inflation. So a recession, um, you know it's coming. Did you see when she admitted two weeks ago that she got it wrong about inflation? Did you see what the Treasury press office came out and completely said she didn't say any of that? They literally go look at the cleanup that they did. They they put a sentence in there. Well, she was talking about one specific little like whatever it was. I forget what, what they, how they cleaned it up, but it was literally Treasury, you know, whatever walks back um, what she said. So apparently she wasn't wrong about inflation. So this is this could not be worse. Russia to seize control of eastern Ukraine within weeks. Battle of Donbass will be decisive. Judgment Day coming for Zelensky. Unbelievable, folks. Across military, basic training changing with focus on mentorship, not yelling. Wow. So uh, the country's in trouble. The market's in trouble. The world's in trouble. Um, Amazon. Let's talk about it. Real quick, this is a great article. Uh in The Economist, bosses want to feed psychedelics to their staff. I want you to read this. This is your homework to read uh, before accelerate retirement. I'm telling you, man, it's coming. This is the shift. Talking to Marcus, talking to Doc. Uh, one of uh, our No Fallen Heroes guys that you met, Slider, was up in Pennsylvania last week. Nice article. I don't have the article handy. I should. Uh, we'll brief that in accelerate retirement. Slider was up at the Pennsylvania State House, man. Uh, with a bunch of other folks, uh, Jesse from Heroic Hearts, a, a SEALs, this slider was going through security and some guy grabbed him because he had his, you know, naval flight officer wings on his lapel. And the guy's like, NFO, yeah. Turns out this guy's a Marine Wizzo, uh, NFO, who's a state rep. He's like, what are you doing here? Slider briefed him on the thing. He's like, I had no idea. And the guy's like, dude, I am my PTSD. I'm awful. So I can do this. So this is it, man. This is a, uh, this is the moment we are at the inflection point and I'm preaching to the choir, but no fallen heroes is going to accelerate uh, this becoming mainstream. I guarantee you there it is. Sledge just posted it in there. So take a look at what slider did at the, at the state house. So now let's get to Amazon. So where was the, the, the run up to the split, right? It had a little bit of a run up. Uh, Amazon it, it easily is going to break 100. I mean, it's down 6% today. Please don't tell me anybody. There, oh, there it is. So there's the implosion. There's the run up to the split and then implosion. So we got that right. We said there would be a run up into the split and then buy the rumor, sell the news. So there's your Obama teachable moment. Those are just, these are layups. People don't understand math. That's okay. Trade it anyway. Somebody announces a stock split, buy it before it, sell it after. Um, but I think I think we break 100. If it holds 100, might be a little bullish, but 80. I think 80 is a legitimate price target for uh, – for Amazon. Let's a quick let's just brief the week real quick. We obviously the biggest thing this week is Jerome Powell uh on uh Wednesday. So we got the Fed meeting. Same day that we got Jerome, we have uh retail sales. Okay? A uh, Fed uh, Empire State import prices, inventories, housing, crude, and then all that. Wow, this is this is going to be Wednesday is going to be a massive, uh, massive day. Thursday, Philly Fed weeklies, building permits, housing starts. How's the housing market? So you got crypto crashing, potential black swan. Housing market imploding, absolute black swan. It's 2008 all over again. Thank God I live in South Florida. The homes, even if they go down a little bit, people still want to live near a beach. But man, 
some of these places like a Billings, Montana or, or wherever that, you know, biggest place that saw explosion in housing in the past two years due to COVID, they will get destroyed. I lived it. We, uh, I moved from Keller, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, up to Chicago in 2006. I bought a Mick mansion out in Naperville. And what happened? Two years later, destroyed. Got totally destroyed. Got destroyed in Chicago, but was down here as everything was getting destroyed and lucked out. So, um, but housing, if, if housing gets destroyed, man, it's, it's over with. He's speaking on Friday, though, so this will be interesting. If if he goes, I mean, what, I, I, this is weird. This is why I'm going to be very ginger about trading this week, if at all. Um, a half a point is given, right? We all know a half a point's coming. Does he do 75? If he does 75, I think this is why the market's trying to telegraph. The, 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 again, the tail's trying to wag the Fed a little bit. Like, we're expect. oh, man, if he does 75, we're all going to freak out. And then he does a half. It might be a everybody settles. But does he clean up on Friday? All right? Does he does he use Friday to say whatever, he, whatever happened on Wednesday to try and help it out? So, um, yeah, commercial real estate's getting destroyed. No, I, I don't think so. I think we need. I think we've had, isn't it two quarters? I think the official definition is three quarters. So I think if we get, we're in a recession, you guys know it. We, as we've briefed repeatedly, it takes X amount of data. And then the government looks back and go, oh yeah, we've been in a recession since this time. Instead of like, as of eight o'clock this morning, we're in a recession. So I absolutely believe uh, we are. So, um, okay. Anyway, so I think Amazon's going lower, but be very... I, you know, catching up yesterday and, and uh, Saturday, man, just getting my mind back into all of this stuff. Uh, there was great articles that I was reading about. You know, this market is near impossible to trade and everything like that. So you have to make a decision, right? Because trading is different from investing. <clears throat> if you have time to take, you know, shots of opportunity and dogfight this market, great. But um Stocks open with fifth largest sell program in history. Wow. Panic, depression, everyone who dies out there dies of confusion, a market of devastating disorientation. Whoa. Now, there was another one, though. This <laughs> is Joe Biden. Uh. During the campaign, Mohammed bin Salman is a murderer. We want nothing to do with Saudi Arabia. They're a rogue regime. Hello, Saudi Arabia. This is how fucking awful Democrats are. They would rather buy oil from Iran, who kills Americans, Venezuela, dictatorship, and Saudi Arabia. than the United States. The tax money that we give to this government is going to fund murderers. I love that headline. Biden awkwardly claims that's eh, really about Israel, not oil. He's just they're cowards. They're 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 be nice, but they're getting very nervous moving from DEFCON 4 to DEFCON 3. Yep. Consumer sentiment. Look at consumer sentiment, guys. Holy crap. Wow. Un so we broke the consumer sentiment levels are below the financial crisis. I, I can't. I don't even. I, I remember the financial crisis. I was in the board of trade and the SIBO. But I mean, this is just wow. Here's what I'm getting at. Uh, <clears throat> You have to um, you have to decide, guys, if you're going to trade or invest. Thomas, DEFCON 1 is the highest is means we're at war. DEFCON 5 is like peace. <laughs> Marcus. I sent him 
he and Melanie, all the, the big, nice thing of flowers. So, Thomas, that means we're going closer to a full-blown war in the market. Yeah, do you see that, David? <clears throat> all these limousine liberals are like giving golfers shit for joining that Saudi league. And I'm like, your president, our president, is flying to Saudi Arabia to kiss his ring to try and lower oil prices. So... <clears throat> Anyway, but you just scroll through this and it's here's where here's where I'm getting at is you all have to figure out what you want to do at this point. Trading this again, this is one of the best weeks for me to uh, to get on the road because, uh, I, I, you know. Not enough signs uh, of, a, of a market bottom. I, I, we're not even close. I, this, again, everybody who's looking for a bottom is wrong. Not even close, folks. And let me repeat this since I haven't said it in a while. This is what it will look like. You know, all this implosion, and it's going to do that. There will not be this. There won't even be this. It will be this, and maybe that eventually. So all the bottom feeders and pickers, folks, is that we're getting, you know, this is bearish double vertical and, you know, buy puts and, everything time eventually it's going to get back into a sideways market which is iron condors time man so i'm digging this especially with the uh with a higher uh, volatility so that's what's coming is a move to the right not a uh not a up so <clears throat> uh yeah greg you should be these type of days this is like covid crash again i'm still catching up on on uh on everything but these are like COVID crash days where you needed to, at the open, buy puts with both hands. Somebody said earlier that, I don't know, whoever said it, we might go back to the COVID lows. I, I already drew that on the map. I think, let's go back to SPX. Uh, and Amazon, yeah, Amazon's going to, is heading lower. Uh, SPX. Yeah, look at that, man. This is, I, I yeah. So a couple of things. <clears throat> let's, since we're in a solo Amazon, let's talk about Amazon. I would be doing, I think, you know, 80 is a definite, is a definite possibility. It's a hundred dollar stock now, which is creepy. I'm still adjusting my eyesight to this. That would be what? A 20% further drop in Amazon sitting wherever I was, Baton Rouge, waiting for the weather to clear. I did read about um, just the tech that, you know, when the Wall Street Journal's, uh, you know, calling the, hey, it's the death of tech type of thing. Big tech is done, at least for a while. I get it. It's done being what? A, a, a growth stock, like a explosive and insane insanity. Now they kind of, they're going to throttle back into what? Value space. Let's be clear, man. Amazon ain't going anywhere. If anything, you got, I'm not giving you the Amazon speech. You all know it. It's a behemoth. It's not going anywhere. It's getting hammered. Duh. When in doubt, run the ma. The, the, the names that aren't going out of business. They're not Quan or Dogecoin or whatever. These things won't go to zero. They can't. Airplanes have value. Real estate has value. Trucks have value. They're not made up. But let's take a look at Microsoft. <clears throat> when in doubt, run the ma. Yeah, man, up I'm 350. Remember that shit? Wow. I, I I don't even want to draw in here, but this before we before we get and look at this. Jesus, Apple. There might be a little. Is that 130 right there? Yeah. We don't hold 130 on Apple. It's definitely look out below. Before we get into being bearish on Amazon, does anybody, because we have to red team this, kind of see, it feels like we might all agree. Let's red team. What, let's just go stare at this because it gives me a better, what is the bullish case? Let's ripple through some, let's red team our bearishness. Peace in Europe. 
Vladimir Putin, sorry, got it wrong. We're leaving. Odds of that happening, 0.1%. It's not going to happen, but the odds of being killed by a golden retriever are never zero. What else is bullish? The Fed stops. Odds of that happening? 5%. David, I like that. Mitch, he ain't going to do that. If he's flying to Saudi Arabia to kiss a murderer's ring that he called a murderer and he'd never kiss his ring, he ain't drill- we ain't drilling at home. Um, I agree, though. That would be awesome. You're right. If we could drill at home, well, he's not going to do it. How many times have we seen people in his administration admit like, oh, no, we're making this as painful as possible for you. So you buy electric. Let them eat Teslas. Um, But I liked what David said. But that's when, folks, I think I said this a couple of weeks ago. We did draw that out there. So David's right. Um, You know, we could we can put an X out here and say that might be an up moment. When, not if, the Republicans take control of the House and the Senate. I mean, it's just going to be. I mean, they're they're talking about uh, ditching Biden. I mean, Bernie Sanders the other day. I dare these Democrats to come out from hiding. If you're going to say something like that, attach your name to it. Every Democrat, they're not going on record, maybe, but, you know, over the weekend, reading all the reports. Washington Post, whoever it was, like we surveyed 50 high level Democrats and many elected Democrats who no, none of them wanted to be named, say he's he's can't run for reelection. So now Kamala is starting to jockey and and uh, what's his name? Mayor Pete. So uh, so that's potentially bullish. So. Um, all right. So anybody else? I mean, <laughs> it's kind of sad when we're you're grasping at straws, but I'm doing this for the random person out there who does what? Well, if everybody's bearish, I'm going to be bullish. That works one time out of 10 and it won't make enough for you to be wrong 90% of the time. So I get it. If everybody's thinking the same, somebody isn't thinking, but we just did our little exercise and it sounds like ain't no reason to be bullish on anything. Right? So, um, uh, Jack, I, it's my recording button is lit up for me. So Bob might be right. Um, you know, we Bob's right in a sense of what we will have some of those. Let's draw them. One, two, three, four, five. We will get an oversold bounce. He's right. So that's why long rant to get back to where I started this rant is you have to decide what you're going to do. If you are investing, everything's on sale. This is your Warren Buffett moment. When there's blood in the streets, you walk in and scoop it up. Start looking at Amazon leaps out two years from now. If this thing isn't unfornicated in two years from now, there you don't even have a brokerage. We're all, it's over with, right? We got the Secretary of Defense saying we don't support an independent Taiwan the other day, even though Joe Biden last month said, oh, yeah, we're, you know, we want an independent Taiwan. It's all over the place. Bob, that might be a little bit of a reprieve uh, if they just go. Well, well, 50 is in there, right? 50 is priced in a half a point is priced in for Wednesday. If they go 75, that might actually be a little bit. It's see, it's weird. So if they went 75, does the market say, awesome, they're, they're, now they're really, they're, they're starting to pay attention here. You guys know this. I said this three months ago, four months ago, whenever we broke the 40-year inflation high, I said, okay, everybody get ready for the emergency press conference from the Fed with a one-point rate hike. Didn't happen. That's what I would have done if I was the Fed chief. We would not be here right now if Jerome Powell and Janet Yellen did their job. I guarantee you that they we've done this in the past when other Fed chiefs like did their job like holy shit. Boom. Now it's markets can't go down. Well now look at what you did. I we nailed this guy. I, I love this. Sat in the board of trade 2008 in the options news network. I wish I could go watch all the shit that I did because I, I said this was going to happen. 
we created the biggest moral hazard in the history of markets and now we're paying for it. And the arsonist is now trying to be the volunteer firefighter showing up and it's going to fail. So, um, yeah, we yeah exactly. What's our balance sheet at, guys? Nine trillion. So let let's let's go because I've got ten minutes left. If you're investing, invest. Wow, that's brilliant. It's it, that's the truth. If you're investing, invest. I still think we got a little lower to go, but nobody times the bottom perfectly unless you're us in the COVID crash. But you know what I mean. I I, I don't. My call signs whiz, not Nostradamus. I can't go out into the future and predict a, a an event. The only event would be a COVID crash, Jerome Powell dropping a financial nuke. The other event would be a peace in Europe, and that doesn't look like it's happening anytime soon. If anything, Putin the other night on TV was getting more, you know, more bellicose to use an SAT word. So. Now let's get into if you're trading. If so, this is really dangerous right now. I mean, this has been what's the SPX down right now? Because we might get an oversold bounce. I mean, that's that's insanity. Wow, three percent today, man. Almost the S and P down four percent. So this is a cliff. I should have started this brief by doing a COVID crash buy puts. That's my fault. Uh, just buy an SPX puts. Man, that's ugly. Again, this is the trading. We will have a, a bounce. There will be somebody will step in and this is trading. Right. So, you know what? I can't. Uh, no. With with Jerome this week and the coin flip between a half a point and 0.75, I would. I'm not. You know what? I'm not going to do that because I think we're going to get. Uh, you know. Yeah, because I was going to get. I was going to do an a a Amazon bear put spread, which I rarely do. That, that's not true. I'm starting to do a lot more debit spreads, aren't I? Why? Because of the conditions we're in. Um, yeah. I skipped my call this morning because I wanted to catch up. I mean, look at that. This is the federal funds rate. I'm f so you guys know I, I I feel things. It's like flying the airplane. Um, I think we might get a little bit of a relief rally on Wednesday. No matter what the uh, no matter what the half a point or seventy or point seven five. Um, especially after this massive down leg, you know, Jerome's just I, he might be doing. You know, so right now, if you're Jerome Powell, I know you're not supposed to be looking at the screen we're looking at, but of course they are at the Fed and at the White House. Folks, people, I don't, you can, you can froth at the mouth about abortion and gun control until you're blue in the face. And now we have November issues. You don't. Nobody gives a shit about that when they're broke. James Carville, the snake. It's the economy, stupid. That's all people care about. Here's what I'm rambling about. I think Jerome might have, try, he's got to say something soothing on Wednesday. If he doesn't, it really is look out below. If he does 75 points, you'll see the market freak the hell out. And then an hour later in the press conference, how many times have we seen this? The the mass of this. And then he, he starts doing his ooga booga speech and you get that thing. That ha That's happened like the past two times. I got kicked in the teeth on one. I'm like, that was dumb. I don't like being dumb. It doesn't sit well with me. But if you believe with the Fed meeting this week that you're going it, to, it, it's bad, 
then you get bearish. Buy puts, bearish double vertical, whatever. I don't feel it. I'm a I'm a 50 delta guy. I, yeah, there, there's the answer. This is why we do these briefs. I kind of talk through it and I kind of make my own decision. And but you have to make your own decision. I'm a 50 delta, and when uh, that's that's flipping coins. I don't like flipping coins. We also have to see. I mean, my so uh, you know the uh, the one guy, the jet blue captain that I fly uh, L39s with. He's I briefed you. He was going to do a crypto service for us. He ain't. I don't, I'm not that guy either, guys. I, I don't. I don't dance on. Let me read some of his shit here. <clears throat> Celsius problem is very serious. It can cause a Bitcoin runoff and a domino effect with other Bitcoin holders. Coin, PayPal, SQ, Hood stocks will be seriously impacted. People will shoot first and ask questions later, aggravating the problem even further. Bitcoin crash is just starting, in my opinion. <clears throat> it will also impact Tesla earnings due to its Bitcoin holding. This gets way uglier before it gets better. <clears throat> Excuse me. Based on technicals, which is nothing related to fundamentals and everything to do with panic and margin calls. Best course of action right now is patience, lay back and watch the show. Don't try and catch the box. Keep in mind, Coin made the statement that if they bankrupt, the Bitcoin held on their platform can possibly be used for their debt holders. Oh, boy. My last two crypto cycles had 90% ETH, Ethereum, ETH drops and 85% Bitcoin drops. Buckle up. Celsius is a factor, but I think ETH announcing another delay of their proof of stake and difficulty bomb update is the leading factor. I have no idea what that means. ETH is the oil market of crypto. Fuck with the flow of oil and everything else suffers. Not even close to the panic level. I need to pull the trigger on anything. There you go. Um, so that's my answer. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. I might start investing and I know we're going lower, but. Might be, I might start buying the stock. I might just start buying Amazon shares now and accumulating, doing the, uh, just adding, you know, buy 10 shares, 50 shares, 100 shares type of thing here and there. I think that's, yeah, Mike, we're doing the wagon wheel, man, selling the cash secured puts. With, with the market where it is, with implied volatility through the roof, um, the wagon wheel would be, it's it's good wagon wheel time. Maybe even what's that? yeah. Somebody said I'm sure XLY is getting hammered. Everything is getting hammered. But um, yeah, I mean X, everything's got more to go, low to go, guys. We will get a a bounce on, on something, but. So if if we don't hold these levels, everything looks the same. SPX, XLY, Amazon. We all look, have this this wait. If it if it breaks these levels, um, it's look out below. If we hold here, I think Jerome might give us a little bit of. We might get a violent relief in over. It's an, we could get an oversold bounce on Wednesday. That so that's enough. I mean, that's enough for me to to keep my powder dry. I have zero interest in gambling, man, and flipping coins. Uh, if if and I was I you know wherever I'd stop or at night on the ranch, I loved it, man. I miss Texas. Being on that ranch at night and hearing the just of nature and the sun setting. I, oh man, I was at peace. Anyway, I would check in with the. Max Afterburner Group, and you guys were doing a fantastic job last week pounding this thing into dirt. Shameless plug, become a hunter, or we might do, I might do a special promo. That's on, I got to put that on the whiteboard here. I'm doing, I'm going to hook some people up here. <clears throat> um, but last week, 
of course, when I was gone, uh, was the week, of course, to pound it into the dirt with bearish double verticals and and uh, and all that stuff. So um, I'd wait, guys. I'd wait to see. Um, I'd wait. Yeah, kid, kid is looking at doing maybe. Well, you could do a kind of secure put on. Um, oh man, that or lightning bugs like fireflies in the sky. You know what's interesting is XOY <clears throat> is more expensive than Amazon. It's a hundred and thirty-seven dollar ETF, and Amazon's a hundred bucks. Remember, you know, kids, you know, a cash secured put. Oh, wow. Look at that, man. Oh, you know. That's ugly. That is just, that's not, I'm telling you. Well, it's decision time, folks. This either, <clears throat> we either hover and hold kind of down here and try and climb out of this thing, or that's going to get filled right there. We've been pretty good about this, and I think it gets filled. I think I think I think eighty is definitely a possibility for Amazon. There's nothing bullish on the horizon. If anything, looking at all the Amazon news this morning, there was regulatory this, EU that, fines, unions. <clears throat> I mean, obviously they're printing money on what they do, but it, I was I'm trying to find the bullish case, but it isn't so. <clears throat> um anyway now mike that's what i'm not doing anything i would not do a bear call spread on amazon i'm telling you man so we've had l l let me wrap it up here one two three four today four or five days in a row of something whether look at this one two three four five level you usually one two three four five and a half level big moves are about four to five day moves right that's a trading week and then it's evaluation time with the fed meeting this week after getting destroyed and where did we go back to guys it's almost like we do this for a living you know i, I drew this channel right i said it's going it came right back to the top of the channel that i drew any of these pops out of the channel, it's coming back down. So I would not do a bear call spread on Amazon. Uh, I'm, I'm, I feel, again, I'm a 50 delta, but maybe I'll go in the other direction. I'm 60-40. I'm 60 that we get a relief rally this week, that Jerome does something on Wednesday. Uh, especially if they surprise, quote unquote, with a 75-point raise, um, he's got to say something good in the press conference if he just does 50 he might be neutral in the press conference like not super you know rodney king he might just be like hey it's 50 and things still suck i think if he does 75 he might be nicer in the press conference like we had to do 75 because it's worse but you know trust us so i it, it's enough it's enough for me to say i'm good that i'm gonna i'm gonna sit on my hands any of these Fed weeks, man, are exactly, Thomas, time to go biking, man. I'm going to go. I got a ton of shit to do to the jet, man. I need to replace some tires and the brakes. And uh, so this is a week with in this type of market, guys and gals, with the Fed, with a Fed meeting, it's extremely dangerous to trade. This is why after an hour and three minutes, I come down on the it's I, I'm putting my investing hat on. I'm at the hangar, but at home on my, I have a bullish board. I'm going to start taking a look at stuff. <clears throat> I, I, I might be buying some Amazon, not this week. I will start accumulating Amazon shares, I believe. Remember, Jeff Bezos said he'd never split the stock. It's split. He also said, I'll never have a dividend because giving money back to people is stupid. I, I think. Andy Jassy might change that too. Amazon might be one of those stocks that starts giving a dividend. So, uh oh, kids flying tomorrow. That's going to be bad. Kid, I got your email too, dude. I have like literally a thousand emails to answer. So, <clears throat> anyway, 
All right, guys, I'm going to sit on my hands this week, it definitely with Amazon and maybe with other stuff, but we'll see. I'm, I got to I got to reach out to my uh, my mastermind group since I didn't do the call this morning and, and kind of get a temperature of of where uh, some of the smart the guys. Uh, let, let me see where where they are. So, all right, guys, good stuff. Again, thanks for everything last week. For for uh, I only take. Usually I take one week off a year just to go skiing with the family. This was my second week uh, that I took off, even though it was for work. It was work off, but that ain't work. Love meeting people, shaking hands. I love, I got to play the trailer on the podcast. So Marcus and Melanie saw the four minute trailer, man, and they were just, they had tears in their eyes. That, that was cool. That was a good moment, them watching the trailer. That was awesome. Couldn't play the extended trailer that the 23 minute one for obvious issues, but got him, got him the, the four minute one. So, all right, guys, good stuff. Let's, uh, let's reconvene. I have a shitload of calls. I want to talk to my mastermind group to figure stuff out, or I mean, I've, I've already figured it out. I want to red team it off them. I didn't look at this though. Uh, <clears throat> Woo. That just keeps going too, man. Remember, I told you that capitulate. We got to see a massive spike in the VIX. The VIX is not panicking. This ain't panic. This ain't panic. This ain't panic. This. We, in order for us to find a bottom, <clears throat> excuse me, you got to get a VIX up here. That's all there is to it. So now the VIX has my attention. Guess I should have started with that, but you know what I mean. This is. Now, now we're getting interesting. Now, now volatility is awake. I think before people just didn't believe the situation, right? Especially with this, this like, yay, I told you as we chopped here, I'm like, this is decision and it's lower. So keep an eye on the VIX. If the VIX keeps climbing, man, we're cats and dogs living together. We need panic. This Today feels a little panic selling-ish, but not super panic selling-ish. We get a VIX up at 40, 50, and a straight down whiz is buying Amazon with both hands. I have, I'm have i sitting on the sideline, got cash. I'm going to come in and eventually when the, uh, the carnage clears. But for now, either sit on your hands or pound it into the dirt. But be careful with the pounded into the dirt right now <clears throat> because we might have a Fed relief rally this week, okay? So, all right, guys, good stuff. Again, thanks for last week. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm going I, – I agree, Mike. This is orderly selling. I've seen panic, man. I've seen screaming on the floors of panic selling. This ain't it. Uh, I'll let you know when there's panic selling. But anyway, guys, all right, have a great rest of your day. I'll get the replay posted here shortly. God bless. Happy hunting. Fights on and namaste.